wanderer. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for finding time and space and energy for being here in whatever form, wherever you, <laughs> wherever you are. I am sitting at my desk under this dark moon in Taurus. We are in the last few days of Taurus season and I am just luxuriating <laughs> in the slowness and the spaciousness that life has provided me recently and it has been such a welcomed change of pace which has not happened accidentally <laughs> it's happened through intentional choice making but also through deepening my experimentations with my natal chart as well as my human design body graph and I'm sure I'll be going deeper into these experimentations in the next few episodes that I am currently planning on but before I go into them in more detail I really want to take this episode and introduce you to this framework that I've mentioned here and there and it's a framework that has really slowly been emerging through my studies of the various modalities that I work with through my extensive studies of my own charts and on my own chart and my body graph but also through being able to workshop it with other magical beings and it's been interesting to to really allow the messiness and the confusion to be part of that process and <laughs> in a way I guess I believe it is because of um, because of inviting in the messiness and the confusion and really experimenting with my with my own um, body graph that I've been able to land here where I am today and I just want to mention also that I really feel that this framework is a living organism. It's it's not fixed. Um, it's not fixed where it most likely will end up at. And I don't know if it will ever be like a fixed thing. Um, it might just be a case that it will be an ever evolving framework just like I'm personally just exploring and discovering new facets and new details um, so yeah I just wanted to <laughs> wanted to acknowledge that even if it's just for my, for my own future self that this is where it's at right now and so the framework that I'm talking about here is this idea of our devotion to our sacred work. And this episode is really a quick overview of it. And as I mentioned before, my intention is to create a series with an episode for each part of the framework. And how doing my own deep inner work has really allowed me to cultivate a deeper sense of self-awareness, self-trust, self-acceptance and self-belonging and just to mention here that it's it's a process it's not something where I feel like I'll arrive and it'll be all good <laughs> it's a process and I suppose you could place it all under the self-love umbrella which can also be a loaded word 
but it also points me towards my own incarnation cross in my human design body graph, which for the longest of time was so out of reach for me. And it's called the cross of the vessel of love. And I laugh because because of my past relationship with my buddy, which is not really a laughing matter, but I laugh because of the absurdity of my past relationship with it, which is ultimately the vessel of love. When I think of the vessel of love, it's the physical vessel that our minds and our bodies, our minds and our souls, excuse me, live in. And I've spoken about it before and mentioned that how coming into breath work has really allowed me to connect the three. So the body and the mind and the soul and really understand that they can't operate separately from each other. They all come as a, <laughs> a, total, back, a, pa- a total package, so to speak. But the incarnation cross of the vessel of love is an episode all on its own. So I won't go any, <laughs> won't go into any deeper discussion here. But I just want to mention that the incarnation cross in our human sign body graph is supposed to be kind of like, I don't want to use the word purpose, but for the lack of a better word right now it's supposed to be like our purpose in this life anyway I will talk about it at some other time so the devotion to our sacred work as I mentioned it's not really a fixed framework in the sense that you can't really follow it step by step and (laughs) um really talking about myself here as well I've it's not something I followed step by step but rather I've used it as an invitation to start paving my own path so as a whole it's a framework that invites us to pave our own path that invites us into taking responsibility for ourselves and how we show up in the world but also how we treat ourselves and how we treat the people around us so really it's a framework to cultivate self-love and love for those around us for everything around us not just living beings so when i when I look at the sacred work framework, I see it offering us a magical toolkit. I see it offering us tools that allow us to reclaim, that allow us to reconnect and rediscover ourselves. And personally, as I mentioned earlier, it's really allowed me to start reuniting my body, mind and my soul. It's allowed me to start rewriting the stories and the patterns from my past that stem from my past that weren't really mine to begin with and (laughs) when I think about it haven't really been particularly helpful throughout my life. But I'm also becoming aware that they were the necessary stories for my development, for my unfoldment, as Dane Rudia so beautifully talks about. So Dane Rudia says that our charts are the unfoldment of dynamic, purposeful processes in our lives. So as a whole, the sacred work framework, these magical tools have allowed me to start rewilding myself, rewilding my chart and my body graph and really embodying these 2D objects in the physical world, but also 
experimenting with them and questioning them and taking this almost playful approach to have fun with them. And as someone whose life, life's work shadow is seriousness, if you know about Gene Keys, if not, don't worry about it. Um, it's very easy for me to get stuck in that seriousness. And it's it has been a pattern where I have gone stuck in that seriousness in the past, even on this journey of learning and reading and exploring all these modalities. But that again is a story for another time. So I guess what I really want to be clear about here is that it's a process. This framework, it's a process. It's not an overnight fix. In fact, I would say that there is no fixing involved. Rewilding ourselves doesn't mean fixing ourselves. It means loving all the parts of ourselves. It means having the courage to enter our own dark corners and love them and accept them, but also differentiating between the fact that these dark and dingy corners do not define us, do, do not define who we are. So if you're sitting there thinking, well, what are these tools? Um, so the various modalities that for me, make up this sacred work framework are astrology, human design, gene keys, tarot, journaling, and then finally breath work and breath awareness. And it's definitely not the only framework that you can use. It's a framework that's really allowed me to reclaim all of me. So I'm really speaking here from lived experience, which is a very 3-5, if you're familiar with a 3-5 profile from human design, it's a very 3-5 thing to do. <laughs> and I mean, this may not resonate with you and that's okay too. That's, that's my own inner work that I'm responsible for the fact that not everyone will resonate with me or like me or approve of me or approve of this, these tools. That's just a fact of life, really. So as I said, that's, that's going to be my own inner work. So the various tools that are part of the sacred work framework, they all have their own assignment from my own lived experience. They all bring something to the whole of it. So for example, astrology, human design, and gene keys are the self-awareness tools. These tools allow us to cultivate deeper self-awareness and through that self-awareness comes self-trust and self-validation, self-acceptance, self-approval, and ultimately self-belonging. So through these modalities, we can start to unlearn what's not us. We can start to experiment with what actually is us. We can start to navigate this life on our terms and start paving our own path. We can start to remember who we came here to be. And then when we add in the tarot and the journaling, that's where I find I've really been able to cultivate self-trust. So this practice of self-reflection is really, <laughs> I guess, maybe one of the more important aspects of it, self-reflecting and then through that, learning to trust our own process, learning to trust our own decision-making capabilities and so on and so on. And then finally, when we bring in 
breath work and breath awareness and this is kind of what ties it all together for me like you can do you can do all the mental and mindset stuff but if you don't bring in the body then there's a disconnect somewhere and it wasn't really until I dove into breath work and breath awareness that I really started to see the framework as a whole I felt like there was always a, a component missing and that component was being present in my physical body and cultivating that connection between my body my mind and my soul and so I realized that I could not heal myself until I started to accept my wholeness and reconnect all the parts of me and be present with all the parts of me without the need to fix any of them and also realizing that neither of the parts defined who I was as a whole being And I guess the biggest realization was that my body was being starved of self-love. I was literally trying to fix the parts of myself that I didn't like with my mind. Intellectually think my way out of the parts that I didn't like. And as a Virgo rising with also my Mercury in Virgo in the first house, I acknowledge and I know that I can get stuck very easily in my mental space, in my mind and the stories that eventually I really allowed, I allowed them to f define me as a person. So the body piece was absolutely crucial for me. It is crucial for me. It's, I realized it's not a one and done deal. It's a practice. It's a daily practice to be with my own breath, to nurture that self-trust, to nurture that self-acceptance, to accept all the parts of me and letting myself know that none of the parts define who I am, that I am whole as I am in this very moment. And the aim really then is with this framework to empower you to practice wholeness, to practice being in the present moment and accepting yourself as you are right now, but also knowing that we do not have to stay like this. And that's really the power of the sacred work frame framework for me it's coming back to this unfoldment idea and so rewilding is a process rewriting stories is a process unlearning is a process it's not something that happens overnight it should it's a journey that is continuous <laughs> really there's no real destination and so this idea of self-healing being a lifelong process and once we accept that we can just take that one step at a time there's no rush because there's no finish line there's nothing to prove there's no one else to compete with there is no win or lose there's simply a gentle courage to be with what is and to know that everything changes everything ebbs and flows and that we are part of that process we change we ebb and we flow and as i'm wrapping up this first episode in this series I would love to invite you dear listener to have a chat with me I would love to offer you a 30 minute conversation 
about anything that is present for you right now, anything that is ready to emerge and then tie that back to your personal chart as a navigation tool, as an energetic blueprint that can help you navigate the present moment but also connecting it to a bigger picture, connecting you to a bigger picture. So if this feels resonant, if any of the things that I've talked about today sparks something in you and you want to explore it further with me, you can either leave a yes please in the comments or you can simply reply to this email and I will be in touch. And I would love to finish off our time together with a breath. So I'm inviting you to take a deep inhale, a slight pause and an exhale with me. Thank you so much for being here. And I can't wait to chat with you one-on-one -on -one if that's what's calling on you. I am sending you all my love. Take care.